the title of my public lecture is Can Statistics Save the Day? Uh, I'll explain about this title a bit after. First, I want to talk a little bit about myself. So my name is Nicolas Grelich. I am French. I'm 32 years old. I'm 174 <laughs> centimeters. Officially, actually, I'm just 172, but I prefer saying I'm 174. Uh, I've lived in three countries, in France, in uh, Singapore, of course, and also in Wales for one year. Uh, I have two siblings. I have five nephews, nieces. I have 10 fingers. I have 206 bones, 60, 650 muscles, 2 million hairs, and uh, about 100 trillion uh, cells. And I guess you, you understand with this slide that I like statistics. It's kind of, I find it fun. So what is statistics? So for most people, statistics uh, look like that. Most people think statistics is just numbers. Uh, it's just facts displayed as numbers or as graphs. So these are, we don't, you don't need to read what it is. It's not important. It's just random graph or some maps. And well, for me, this, this kind of statistics uh, is not the fun part of the statistics. So if you think statistics is not fun, is boring, I agree with you with this part. Uh, because for me, statistics is much more than simple fact displayed nicely. Uh, statistics is about some methods, some uh, way of reasoning, some techniques, and some way of reasoning again. <laughs> and what I want to show you is some techniques that are different from the kind of thing you used to see and are more that are quite fun. And these techniques are the ones that are here. Uh, capture, recapture, randomized response trick, Monte Carlo method, and statistical testing. So I will uh, go through all these techniques. I will try to, uh, uh, to make you have a feel of this more fun technique, the things that I, is very, for me it's interesting, maybe it won't be for you, but I will try to make it for you as well. And, and we'll see that through uh, a story about a guy who's called Norman Distribution. Uh, maybe some of you have heard about the distribution, norma, the normal distribution, so it's a little tricky name. Uh, Norman Distribution is, will be a JCU stu as student. He's 22 years old. He's single. He plays soccer. He has a very bad memory, so this is important for our talk. But he's pretty good in math and stats. And he's in love with Piva, Piva Liu, which is, who is here. And yeah, today, um, normal distribution will have uh, has planned a date with p value uh, in the evening, so he really wants to go on this date, and we'll see if he will succeed or not. Uh, so the the day starts at 7 a.m. 7 a.m. Norman is uh, wake up by his alarm clock. He goes to the kitchen, uh, about to open the fridge, and he wants to get milk to go with his cereals. But then he look on the left, and there's something awful. There are ants that are coming into his cereals. And he loves his cereals. And the uh, issue also is that it's not the first time. He lives with his mom, and his mom uh, is getting him an ultimatum. He needs to get rid of the uh, ants, definitely, because it's not the first time. And if he's not, he gets into big trouble. So he needs to get rid of these ants. 
uh, the issue is that uh, he doesn't have much time. He has to go to school. So he needs to get rid of the ants either quickly, but he doesn't know if he will succeed. Um, the, the best thing to do, OK, he say, oh, no, is to, for him is to call an exterminator of ants. Because so that he doesn't have to do anything, he calls the exterminator, and and he can go to school and keep seeing p-value after. But the exterminator is a bit stupid. He asks how many ants there are, and he doesn't want to come if he doesn't know the number of ants. And no man has no idea about the number of ants. Because, as you can see, we see few ones here, but there is a hole on the right, and behind the, roll, uh, the hole, uh, there's no way to know how many ants there are. Well, there is a way. Uh, Norman thought first about destroying the wall, but he talked about it with his mom, and she, she, she doesn't agree. So he has to find another way. And the way he thinks, after is to use statistics, and especially the capture-recapture method. OK, so the capture-recapture method is a statistical method that it consists in capturing, so for, for us would be ants, some ants, to uh, mark them, to release them with the other ants, and then to, uh, to capture, recapture the some ants and see if we can draw some conclusion from it. So first, what it does, it gets some ants uh, from those who are, who are here, so from those who, uh, that you can see, and he color them in green. I have no idea how he does it. I, I don't know all the life of Norman. I just know his story, but he managed to color them in green. He's very good at it. Uh, so now, we have 10 ants colored in green. Then what it does, he releases the ants that are perfectly OK still uh, with, the other, with the other ants. So the idea is uh, he wants the ants to, to be a mixture of black ants and green ants. And then uh, he goes do his stuff, that is, he needs to uh, eat breakfast. He won't have cereal for this day, but he will get something else. And he comes back at 7.40, so that the ants had time to mix with the, the green ants, had time to mix with the black ants, and to go to the hole, to come back, whatever they want. So now what we see is just a random sample of all the ants. And it happens that the random sample, the random sample contains some green ants. So if you count the number of black ants, there are six uh, of ants, total ants, there are 16 ants that we can see. Can you see uh, here? So there are 16 ants, and from these 16 ants, we see four green ants. That is, we have a proportion of green ants Proportion equals to 4 out of 16, that is 25% of green ants, it seems. Now there's something, we, something else we know. We know that there are 10 green ants because it, no man colored 10 green ants. So we have 10 green ants in total. And now, <coughs> it's a simple, I guess, maybe you see that there is a simple relation. We know the proportion of green ants. It's 25%. And we know that there are 10 green ants in total. So if 10 green ants correspond to 25%, the number total of ants is just 10 multiplied by 4 to get 100%, so there are 40 ants in total. So now, we, I mean, 
it's an estimation. He, is, he doesn't know that there, are, there is exactly 40 ants in total, but you can guess from what he sees and from the proportion of green ants that there are approximately 40 ants in total. And this is not a lot. So what he does, he, he called back the exterminator and he said, never mind, I will take care of it myself so that he, he can keep his money. Uh, so this technique, the capture-recapture technique, uh, is actually very used. It's used a lot in uh, ecology. So what happens is uh, in ecology to count the number of, of, uh, of uh, for example, here of birds of one species. So the researcher will get some birds. They will mark them, like you see on, on, the, on the legs of, yeah, it's not, on the leg of the birds. The, the, the bird is marked. And then they are released. And after a few months, or maybe more, uh, they get, again, some birds, a sample of bird, and they see the proportion of birds from the one they have that are this mark, and they can then estimate the total number of birds. And they do that for other species, for other animals. So it's used a lot to estimate the, the total number of, of animals, because it's not possible to count them all. Of course, one assumption of this, very important, is that the, here the birds mix that are marked mix well with the other birds. If they don't, of course, you may get back too many uh, marked birds as compared to what you would expect. But sometimes it works very well. So this is what, what Norman did. He used these techniques. So it saved part of his day. And now it's uh, as he had to get rid of the ants himself, he's uh, not late, but uh, very close to be late. It's 8.59. So he gets to JCU, Singapore, uh, because he has an exam, a mathematic exam at 9 AM. And at 9.02, he managed to be in, uh, in the exam. So now we need uh, a little reminder about normal distribution. Normal distribution is in love with PIVA. And this is important because uh, if he fails at the exam, he will have to come back uh, at the end, in the evening, to get, uh, to get some to attend some special mathematics lecture. So he doesn't want to do that, because if he does it, that he cannot date with FIVA. So he needs to success, success at this, succeed at this exam. Uh, the second reminder is Norman is pretty good in math and stats, so it should be OK, except that he has a very bad memory, like very bad. He cannot remember any number. And this is an issue because the mathematic exam, that is three hours, the first question is give an approximation of pi. He has no idea how, uh, what pi is. He doesn't remember. He's, as I told you, he has a very bad memory. So he cannot answer this question. So he's a bit disappointed. Oh, shit. And uh, the exam supervisor is not happy that he say, oh, shit, but it's OK. But Norman thinks then that, OK, I cannot give the question one, but it's only two points. Maybe I will be able to do the others. Except that a bit after he reads, this approximation will be used for the rest of the exam. <laughs> so now he's not happy. So he says something a bit loud. and. Uh, unfortunately, everybody uh, heard that, and the exam supervisor asked him to to go see the director. And so this is what he does. Now he's waiting for to see the director, and okay, it's a, he's in a very very bad position. First, he will get into trouble probably with the director with the school. And on top of that, uh, the math exam, he cannot finish it. So he will get a bad mark. He will have to co come back the evening. And he, he won't date 
uh, p bar. So it's really bad. But he hears some he hears something. And this may be may save him. He hears that the director wants to know what student really thinks. That, that is uh, the director wants to know how students feel about the, the campus, the JCU campus. And the problem is that when he asks questions, the students uh, don't want uh, are afraid of saying things, maybe, but just because they are, they are afraid that it may come back to uh, be, they will be in trouble after. So they don't answer truthfully. They just say all the time, I like, I like everything, I like everything, which the director doesn't want. He, just, he really wants to know what the students really think, and he cannot manage to find a way to know it. But Norman is good. He's good in statistics and mathematics. And he knows about a uh, technique that is called the randomized response trick. Uh, now I would like to try with you this technique. So my, I would like you to try to answer this question. Have you ever farted in a lift? <laughs> so can you, uh, so those who uh, have ever farted in a lift, can you raise your hand, please? Okay. Some, some did response, but not a lot which is uh, expected because it's a kind of question about a bit embarrassing, so people usually tend to not want to answer this question. Uh, yeah. Uh, now, uh, did you have, did you get some coins? Do you have some coins in your pocket or do some? I would like all of you to get one coin. So the idea is, is here is that we'll, I will ans uh, ask the same question, but I will add some randomness in it. So that actually it, we won't be able to know if you answer yes for this question or if you actually uh, your, your, your coin went to a, a certain side. So what I would like is for you to, to flip the coin. And now, if you got, if you uh, have, if you got head, I want you to answer this question. But don't worry, because if you get uh, uh, head and tail, if you get tail, uh, you just uh, reply yes. So you just raise your hand. So that if you got head and you want to answer yes. It's okay because maybe uh, other people will think that you got tail, so you had to say, to raise your hand. Is it clear? So now I would like to know who uh, have ever farted in a lift. So those who, I want those who got head to raise their hand. No, those who got tail to raise their hand, plus those who really farted in a lift. <laughs> Okay, let's count, maybe. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Is it? Nineteen. And how many are you? Can you count yourself? Thirty-six. Nah. Okay. <laughs> uh, so thirty-six people so far in total, and so as uh, you all did a coin flip first, I accept that ab uh, about half of you got head, about half of you got tail. So from the thirty-six people, I expect eighteen uh, to get tail. And so to answer yes, which leaves us, uh, yeah, 
which is left with 19 minus 1 equal, uh, 19 minus 18 equals 1, uh, one person who, an estimate, an estimation of one person who really farted out of, uh, out of 18, because we removed the 18, now we, have, we are on the other 18 percent, and from the 18 percent, I have one person of our 18 that answered really yes. Okay, maybe uh, I didn't count the 19, let's suppose it was more, it should be more, but I guess you got my points, more or less. Yeah, okay, good. And, and so, uh, Norman, who knows this technique, uh, he, he talks uh, to the director about this technique. And first, yeah, first, randomized, trick, uh, randomized response trick is very used as well. Uh, it's used to evaluate the number of people, for example, who use drugs or who avoid paying taxes, or use prostitutes, or other things like that, because it's very embarrassing. No, nobody wants to answer truthfully, but except that if they, they, there is this random net added, then you cannot know if they really did it or not, and so you can get uh, truthful answers and better estimations. So, uh, Norman tells that to uh, the director. The, the director finds it quite nice, and he says to Norman that he can go and get back to his math exam. So Norman is happy, partly because he's, he is still this, the, the first question of the ex exam that is problematic. But he has had some time to think about that, and through um, between the director office and the exam room, there is a pantry, and he gets uh, into the pantry uh, well, well, when nothing, nobody looks at it, and he gets a bowl, a bowl of rice. Okay. It seems stupid, but it will be u useful. So he gets back to the exam, and still this problem, give an approximation of pi, because everything is based on that. So now, this is the third technique. It's that I will talk about the Monte Carlo method. The Monte Carlo method is uh, a method to use simulation to uh, to simulate some randomness, some random processes, uh, in order to get some answers. So that uh, Norman doesn't know because he has a very bad memory, but it's in the the exam paper, so he, he knows it. There is a uh, area of a circle that is equal to pi r square, or r is the radius, uh, but we can use the diameter as well, and r is half of the diameter, so pi r square equals pi d over 2 square. And there is also the formula for the area of a square, which is equal to, to d square. The diameter, uh, okay, sorry, I forgot. I am using this drawing, because Norman, the first thing he does is he draws a square and a circle inside. So it looks something like that. So the diameter of the circle is also the side of the square. So now you have um, Norman as the formula for the area of a circle and the area of a square. And what it does, he calculates the area of circle divided by the area of squ the square. And he gets pi d over 2 square divided by d square which is equal to pi d square and d square cancel and it gets pi over 4. That means that pi is equal to 
area circle divided by area square multiplied by 4. So it doesn't help yet because, uh, because Norman doesn't know what's the area of the circle and the square, except that he has some rice. And what, what he can do is throw the, uh, the rice on randomly on the circle and the square everywhere to get something like that. And so by doing that, he gets an approximation of the area of the circle divided by the area of the square. Because the number of, uh, of rice that goes into the circle is proportional to uh, the number of uh, the, sorry, the number of uh, rice that goes into the circle divided by the number of rice that goes into the, the square is proportional by the uh, proportional to the area of the circle divided by the area of, area of the square. So it makes sense because each, uh, each rice has, has a certain area. So it's kind of, we, uh, if we put lots, lots of, of rice, we get exactly um, um, a quantity that is related to the area. Here we don't put enough in a way, but we put quite a lot. So we have good estimation of um, quantities that represent the area of the circle and the area of the square. So by doing that, uh, we have pi that is approximately equals to the number, oh, it's written here, the number of rice grains in the circle divided by the number of rice grains in the square multiplying by, multiply by four. And by doing that, uh, if you try at home, <laughs> maybe, uh, you need quite a lot of rice, but usually you can get an estimate quite good, pretty fast. So for a normal, he had 52 rice, uh, grain of rice in the circle, 65 in the square. The square is the circle plus the outside. And so he gets an, uh, an estimation of pi equals to 3.2. And you all know that pi equals 3.1 for something. So it's pretty close. And remember, the first question was just to give an approximation. And 3.2 is a decent ex uh, approximation. You can, you can continue with that. Uh, now, the issue is that after doing that, it's already 9.40. It's already 9.40. And he's only at the first question. So he said, OK, let's go back to it and continue the, the exam. But you remember that Norman is good in math and stats. So at 11.40, he gets to the final 56 question, which is the theorem of Drudik's world MX that doesn't exist. But, and he find it very easy. So he aces he the, the exam. Uh, Monte Carlo method. So, so it's a uh, method to consist in sim simulating some random processes. Here, for example, we, what we did, we, re we simulated some uniform distribution inside the circle and the square. And this allowed us to uh, get some estimation of the area and uh, the value of pi. Uh, this method, the Monte Carlo method, is very general and very used. Uh, everywhere in particle physics, genetics, finance, like in all, the, all areas of uh, research. Now, uh, Norman aced the exam and he had lunch, etc. Now it's, it's three o'clock and new reminder, Norman distribution plays football, plays. Football and uh, he's quite good in football. And now at three three p.m. he has a, a match, a soccer match, to play. Another reminder that he is in love with Piva, and Piva is actually attending attending the match. And if if he loses, he is afraid that maybe she won't uh, she won't want to go out with him. So he really wants to win the match. Norman is the captain of his team, and 
when he gets into the, the locker room, uh, he's asked to choose the color of, it, of his shirt. So he has the choice between red and yellow. He has, first, he has no idea what to, to choose. But then there, is some, there are some papers. And he's a bit curious. He looks at the paper. And on one of the papers, he saw that. He sees that some statistics about ma past matches. Uh, so the statistics are about the 1,590 matches have been won by the red team, the team that got the, the jersey red, and 1,410 uh, matches have been won by the, yeah, the team who had the yellow jersey. We, so this difference doesn't seem a lot, so you can guess that maybe it's just a difference due to randomness. But now, Norman is not sure about that. And what he will do, he will use a statistical test. First, what he says is that a match, let's imagine that red and yellow, uh, the, having a jersey red or yellow doesn't affect the result of a match. If it's the case, that means that uh, having red or yellow, uh, there is 50% chance that the winning team wear a, a red shirt, and 50% chance, t uh, chance that the winner get wears a yellow shirt. So it's like a coin flip, actually. It's really like a coin flip. Uh, if you flip a coin and you, know, you say head is red, uh, tail is yellow. Usually, if uh, if you do it three thousand times, to uh, like to play three thousand games, if uh, it's just like a conflict, you should sometimes get this kind of numbers. The red team gets uh, wins one five one thousand five hundred ninety times, and the yellow team one thousand four hundred ten times. So what he will do, he will do that. He's, uh, it's something I, I forgot to tell you. He's very good at coin flipping. He has uh, a, a, a coin, and he will do that. He will do lots of coin flips. So first, you see that the, the arrow represents the biggest number. Uh, so here, for our example, is 1,590. So if you do 3,000 times head and tail, you get the biggest number of the number of head or tail you get. And this will be on this arrow. So he gets a coin, and he starts doing that. He, he does 3,000 coin flips. He's very good at it. And what he gets, he gets 1,500, and 26 uh, heads. So he put this number here on the line. And he does it again. He does again 3,000 coin flips. And what he gets now is 1,507 tails. So as it's bigger than 1,500, this is the tails that you use here. And he does it again, again, again. And he gets this distribution, and he continues. He's very, very good in coin flipping. And at the end, yeah, he gets something like that. That means that is uh, from all the kind, the three thousand coin flips he did, none of none of them went higher than one thousand five hundred ninety tails or heads. He always is below, and he he did that one hundred times. He could even have done more, but now it's already quite convincing that this 1,590, uh, the number, these numbers, cannot happen from simple coin flipping. So that means that probably it's not like a coin flip. There is really something uh, when you wear a red shirt as compared to when you wear a yellow shirt. So of course, Norman now know that he, he needs to wear the red shirt, and this is what he does, because he will have slightly little more chance to win. Okay, it's not a lot, I agree, but 
and uh, he plays a match, and he scores a goal. He is very happy, and and so he wins the match. Uh, about this color, it may uh, be a bit stupid. We think that uh, wearing a, re a red shirt doesn't matter at all. Actually, it does matter a little. And researchers have found that, uh, for example, the effect of red uh, affect the performance. The, I don't know if you remember, in the Olympics uh, of Beijing, I think, there were lots of, uh, in boxing and in, uh, well, in all the uh, sports of fights, uh, lots of red uh, fighters um, won, more than blue ones, and this has suggested to do some research on it, and they, indeed, they have found researchers that color affects uh, the performance. So here, perception of the color red enhances the force and velocity of motor output. Also, red enhances women's attractiveness to men, and red enhances men's attraction to women. So, he, he, he won the match. Now he meets Piva, and he asks if she saw the match, and she did, and she says he were awesome. Uh, and uh, the story continues, but I think I will stop here because it becomes a bit, uh, yeah. And that's it. I will finish with this slide, which is uh, just the, my favorite uh, statistic joke. Thank you.